I saw my psychiatrist Monday, so a couple days ago, and um, we were discussing my lithium, and um, like, I, like I said in the video before, right after my appointment, um, about being happy about not being gaslit again, but um, this is about the lithium. He, it, so I'm going to um, stay on it and um, in three more months do the same thing, get my labs checked and go see him. The concern wasn't the, the lithium level was fine. It was right smack in the middle of good in the green it was my creatinine level which is kidney health which lithium can affect it had gone up it was right on the edge of too high it was 1.02 at 1.03 i would be in the red and it had been 0.95 so it did go up and um so we had a conversation about uh, going off of lithium, and he made a comment that I didn't really pay much attention to at the time. I didn't get what he was saying until later um, today, like two days later. He said, um, well, you know that Seroquel is, which I'm on and have been on for a very long time, is good for treating mania, hypomania, and bipolar depression as well. Now, I knew that the Seroquel helped with, it, was, it, it wasn't being given to me just as an antipsychotic, it was given to me as an anti-manic. And, um, but at that time, I'm pretty sure I was told that you still needed the mood stabilizer because it didn't help with depression. But that's not what he said in this visit. He said that Seroquel could help with all mood fluctuations. And... Um, so I'm thinking that what he was saying was if your creatinine level goes up again and we're, we're talking about messing with your kidneys and, and that can't be. So um, be going off, then that would be going off of the lithium. So I'm just wondering what would life be like just on the Seroquel. He says, put on lithium first. Many, 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 many years ago. And that's what happens with lithium um, when you're on it long term. Uh, it starts messing with stuff. I, It's already gotten my thyroid. I'm on thyroid with hormone replacement. Um, and uh, um, Seroquel was added later um, to help with the mania. So I've only known this doctor for five, maybe this was our fourth or fifth visit, but I've been going to this particular group um, for a very long time and I know I'm always vague on time frames it's it's part of what happens that's normal for me um, I have a really difficult time identifying when things have happened I mean they get in you know, I don't, I have to ask, 
ask how old our dogs are and how long we've lived in our house. And so I can only give vague answers to time frames. So I know long time ago, I can say, let's see, 53. I, I could have been on it for since my 30s. I don't know. No, I don't know. I don't remember. Um, I'm not a I'm not always a reliable um, historian. I, th I thought I was. I thought I was a reliable historian. And um, apparently I'm not because my mother told me, you know, when the whole lithium toxicity thing happened, she told me that I'd had lithium toxicity before and um, and I was like, what are you, no I didn't, what are you talking about? I, I have n no recollection of ever being told I had lithium toxicity and she's, she, and um, she, I think that was when she came to an appointment with me um, and she was, and she just told me, you're not a good historian, but I think I completely am. And I go to doctor, apparently I, I have been going to doctor's appointments, talking like I know what I'm talking about and finding out just recently that I don't, especially time frames and I, I understand, I know I'm going in a whole different direction, but I gotta finish this. I, it is not unusual for people to have amnesia of severe mood changes. Um, that definitely happens to me during, when I have had really big manic, not hypomanic, which has been a long time as far as I know. <laughs> um, no, I mean, I'm talking in the hospital kind of manic. Um, and also with depression, some amnesia of events that occurred in those time frames, especially if I was, I'm in a state of delusion. Um, so, yeah. Not always a good historian, and I thought I was. That's when I started um, doing this. My medical passport, I take this to me to all doctor's appointments. Um, and, it, and I found out when I was diagnosed with stuff medications and stuff, dates, I found them out so I could put them in here. Um, I keep track of my blood pressure in here so when I go to the doctors I have it. Um, my special diet, um, I keep track of my lithium levels and my creatinine levels. Um, I graph my moods uh, because I am unreliable in uh, recalling um, how long and how often I have mood changes episodes. Uh, this helps me actually because like I will sometimes think I'm well, I'm depressed a lot. And then I look at my markings and I was maybe depressed for two days or so. It's really helpful to be able to look back and say, oh, okay, it's not as bad as I, my brain thought it was. So, um, yeah. I recommend everybody with any medical conditions doing this. I now have new thing, new 
addition is what symptoms I get with lithium toxicity. Um, okay, so I think my original uh, topic was how would someone who has um, bipolar 1 handle just being on Seroquel only. I don't see that working out really well. So, but and on everything else and there are things that I would refuse to take. So, I have a nice long list here that I gave him. Um, Depakote and, uh, was a nightmare. Um, Respiral, Zyprexa, um, Abilify, Nightmare. So, if you know of anyone that is just on, like, Seroquel, an antipsychotic, and it helps with both manic and depression, let me know how it's going, because... That would make me kind of nervous. I do take um, what they sometimes prescribe, I think more for bipolar 2, uh, anti-seizure medications like uh, Neurontin and Zonisamide, but I take those for nerve pain and it's a very low dose. I don't when they try when I tried it way back when it definitely was as a mood stabilizer it, it was a lot higher dose so um on the front of the Renaissance festival I make brooms different kinds um practical brooms that you actually use to sweep um brooms that are decorative and brooms that are like I call them interactive brooms and because they're like fantasy like flying brooms and you have a wand attached to it to a, with a wand holder and I had a whole bunch made and that was when last year, last fall, I went to do the uh, festival to sell my brooms and got dehydrated on top of already having a high lithium dose. Um, ended up in the hospital. So the whole question this year was, am I going to be able to do it again? Uh, ever again and I had all these brooms on my hands so um, that that situation has been solved this is the game plan I'm only doing one weekend but it's a three-day weekend because it's Columbus Day and which is Monday so Saturday Sunday and Monday and that's what I did the first time the chain and the other change were in, that's instead of two weekends. The other change is um, that I am going to see it's kind of far away, so a lot of people stay on site for the weekend and. Um, which I'm going to do the first night, but the last one where it's all over and you come back the next day to take down your tent and, st and your, get your stuff back to in your car and go home, um, that that night before I have to go and pick up all my stuff, and pack up to go home, I'm going to 
stay at a hotel so I can be comfortable and get some sleep and then and it's right by the where the festival is and so then I can be refreshed and cool and hopefully it won't be a really hot October like it was last year then I can be in a better position to pack it up and go home because that was one, that was the really hard part. No, the really hard part was driving on the wrong side of the road. But on in September, I get my I have my appointment and my so like it's Columbus Day weekend. In September 18th, I'll have an appointment with my psychiatrist and get labs done. And hopefully they're okay. If they're not, then I'm going to have to cancel. But I'm also going to request um, getting a getting labs done after like right before I go, just so I know where I stand. I am going to try, I tried last time to get a helper and I couldn't. Um, I'm gonna beg someone I know that might feel sorry for me, but at the same time, I'd be, if I have to do it alone, which I didn't have any problem with the first time I went, I really enjoyed myself. I made money. Um, I'm hoping to have a better experience this year and not, I, I, I won't do another selling at the RenFest again. Um, this would be my last. And, uh, and I'll just enjoy going as a patron, as a visitor. So, um, my mom, I think, is very anxious and nervous about the whole thing, about me going, um, especially if I'm not going to have a helper. So, um, anyway, um, that's that. I'm glad that's resolved. Now I just have to um, convince this person to be my helper. Uh, really, it's just the um, the last day breaking down that really pushed me over the edge last time. My heart was pounding. It was so hot. I was drinking water the whole time. I just couldn't keep up. And I didn't know that I was already toxic. So, um, so bottom line is possibly having a hotel room each night, um, but at least that last night, um, probably no service dog, hopefully a helper. I'll be in a better state to figure out how to pack and stuff and not get lost. Anyway, that's where things stand. I... I was very upset about a video I made and I was excited about not getting gaslit, okay? I wasn't excited about being diagnosed with autism. I, I already knew I had it for many, many years. It was just that it, people weren't testing adults until recently. I didn't just like become autistic. Everybody, you know, I knew, everybody knew. So, um, but I got a nasty comment. So I wanted to clarify, and it's, it's pretty clear in the video though. I wasn't excited about um, being autistic. 
I was ex I was doing the video because I was excited that I didn't gaslit because I've had that happen a couple of more than a couple of times in my life. I've been gaslit for many years um, before I was capable of taking care of keeping track of my own care. I was gaslit many times in the psychiatric field um, regarding my bipolar disorder. I was um, gaslit about my trigeminal neuralgia, which is nerve pain that goes down into my face, and I ended up having cranial surgery where they buzzed a hole in my skull and put two cushions uh, between two blood vessels that are wrapped around a nerve that are calling nerve pain. I was gaslit about that. Um, going to the ER with severe abdominal pain, being gaslit about that, acting like I was seeking drugs and finding out I had stage four endometriosis and had a hysterectomy. You know, I'm gaslit everywhere I go. And so um, I was excited for once that I actually was validated. Um, I don't want, I don't want bipolar and I don't want autism. It sucks. It's very limiting. I could do really well doing group dog training classes, but I don't because I can't. I tried <laughs> and I'm just better one-on-one. -on -one. You know, I, I don't want that. I was excited about not being gaslit. I'd already been diagnosed once by PhDs and neuro uh, psychologists by this one um, place. And, and then again, by my psychiatrist who was like, yeah, I could tell, you know. Um, about my eye contact and mannerisms and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, okay. So, um, and also to quit faking. I wasn't even doing anything in there, but what, smiling? <laughs> I wasn't um, <clears throat> doing anything. It was just, just me talking, so. I don't know. Sometimes I, my initial response to trolls and stuff like that is to get very, very upset right away. And then about two days later, I start to mellow out by saying, you know, these are just a-holes looking to hurt somebody. And so it, it's not reality, but it is hurtful. And um, I think as adults, we often don't like to admit that something hurts our feelings because we're supposed to be grown-ups. And I think there's nothing wrong with saying that your feelings were hurt because it's the truth. Uh, on a similar front, I'm going to be super anxious coming up. I just got used to the church I'm going to. And the priest is what I'm used to. Is moving to somewhere else and they're getting a different priest. Um, so, who, the priest I know as Father Bill. Now I have to get used to someone else. But he did assure me that he would make sure the new priest was aware of me. And if you didn't think I looked autistic in my videos, if you saw me in church, you would be like, oh, because it's, it's hard, but I wanna be there. So 
I try really hard. And they know. Uh, anyway, that's, that's it for now. Doing another channel about religion and my experience and that topic. But I'm putting it on a different channel. I started it on Instagram, but Instagram's just not my jam. Um, it, it's so I'll try to put a remember to put a link to it in case you're interested in that. Because if you're not, I don't want to talk religion on this channel because I think it's inappropriate. Um, I want it to be accessible to anybody that wants to listen. So, okay. Already gone too far again. Um, talk to you later.